I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast that helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. <laughs> okay, Jim. Halloween is over. Uh-huh. You're in New Zealand right now. Yep. Sort of. Well, when the listeners are listening to this, you're in New Zealand. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But while we're recording this, you're here. Yeah. In the United of States. Yes. In the United States of America. So as Thanksgiving is coming, I decided to take up a whole episode to answer a very Thanksgiving-y question, in my opinion. Really? A question from a listener? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. And I thought it'd be perfect for Thanksgiving. Great. I'm I'm into it. I love Thanksgiving. Um, I love questions. I love listeners. So <laughs> it sounds like a perfect combo. Well, the question is from Ryan B. And he asked, why do onions make you cry? Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's exciting. That's a great question, dang. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to answer the very basic chemistry of onions. Okay. And why onions make you cry. And then we're going to get into it a little bit more. And I'm excited about that because it's actually fascinating. Okay, I'm ready. I'm I'm very ready. That sounds awesome. I think it's going to be good. And, and there are a lot of papers on it. Mm-hmm. So you're saying we're going to start kind of on this outer sort of onion skin kind of layer. <laughs> and no, then, I didn't and then after we, And then after we do that, we're going to go into like the next layer of onion, oh. almost all the way to the core or something oh, like that. Oh, no, damn. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Is that what it's called, the onion core? I have that, no that idea. That weird. Seems that like as if, part? Seems like that's what you call it if you actually just ate an onion raw, like an apple, apple core. Oh, gosh. Okay, well... <laughs> So we're going to do that, and then you're going to tell me back everything you learned. Amen. That's Let's our do plan it. for today. Okay, the very basics. Okay. Do you know anything about why onions make you cry? I have zero idea. Have I you... mean, like, I've experienced it many times. I also am a little convinced that because I have glasses, you also have glasses, mm-hmm. I'm convinced that whatever it is kind of gets trapped behind my glasses, <laughs> and that it's actually worse for people with glasses. Well, I don't know about with glasses, uh-huh. but... With contacts that actually you're not supposed to wear contacts in chemistry labs because vapors can get trapped under the lenses and be held onto your eyeballs. Whoa. So that's actually why I wear glasses. And glasses are definitely cooler. I don't know that you can objectively say that. Hmm. <laughs> we only say accurate statements on chemistry for your life. And I don't know that glasses, quote, glasses are cooler, end quote, has been proven. I think... As the non-scientist, I can speculate, and I don't have like some code to stick to. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to correct you, because that's my job as a scientist. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the very basic answer about onions, okay, it's very basic, is simply that onions release a compound into the air. Mm-hmm. That compound irritates our eyes, and then our eyes water to dilute the irritant and try to wash it away from our eyes. Mm-hmm. That's how our eyes always work. Nothing too exciting. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's onion-specific irritant. Our eyes are going to kind of want to, if possible, yes, have some tears to dilute whatever's going on. Mm-hmm. That's in one of eye. the main function of tears, I believe. If any biologists want to write in and or call in or whatever and mm-hmm. give us some information, that would be excellent. But I believe one of the top main functions of tears is to remove irritants from your eyes. Interesting. But here's where this gets a little crazy. That's the basics. That's all that there is. It releases a compound. Mm-hmm. You cut it open. If it's a fresh onion, that's like a big part of it. It's got to be fresh. Mm-hmm. And oh, I don't know if it has to be fresh. You cut it and it releases a compound. That's it. Okay. That's the basics. But where it gets a little crazy is Uh that compound that it releases is not in onions. What? Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So the government puts it in there? (laughs) No. Actually, the onion creates those compounds as a defense mechanism. Whoa. The onion is defending itself even after it's not like part of the... It's not connected to the plant anymore or whatever? I think the function serves to, if it's still growing Mm -hmm. and the onion gets damaged by a predator, something trying to eat it, Uh 
those will be released and uh-huh. ward away the predator, and then it could keep growing. Oh my gosh, that is so crazy. That's speculation, right? But but it is something that only you're, are you saying that it only happens once the like it's damaged or like in our case, yes, cut, yes. Because have you ever noticed your eyes don't water when you're buying onions at the store? I mean, that's totally true. Yeah, you're just like, just <laughs> it's totally low risk just to hold yes. or carry or pick or whatever mm-hmm. onions. Mm-hmm. Man. So my roommate was cutting onions the other day and our whole house, there was no place we could go and escape uh-huh. because everywhere had the eye water problem. But if you carry an onion through the house, that would never happen. That's so true. Yeah, no one's like, get that out of here. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing walking around with that? <laughs> yes. I mean. And that is because the compound doesn't exist until mm-hmm. the cells in the onion are damaged. Man, that is nuts. I did not realize how, like, sophisticated onions were. I know. That's crazy. Okay, so that's the basics. That's the basics of what happens to an onion. So onions on their own totally fine Mm -hmm. if you just still have it as a whole onion not going to cause any issues Mm -hmm. when you start to cut it or if in the wild some animals starting to eat it Mm -hmm. at that point some thing some Mm -hmm. compound Mm -hmm. yeah compound is a basically a a term for a chemical structure or a chemical gets created or released or something Mm -hmm. when that happens Mm -hmm. and that is whatever that thing is whatever that compound is it irritates our eyes right and when it irritates your eyes your eyes water Uh biologists you can tell us all about it yeah and they water to dilute the irritant and take it out yeah and even if even if our eyes didn't water it's already irritating enough it's like (laughs) it's enough to be like you know yes annoyed by now i'm gonna tell you why it's that okay excellent I'm ready. Okay. So this is the very basics. You've got the very basics of onions. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to dig in to the more complex side of things. Okay. Okay. The process by which the thing is formed that irritates your eyes is pretty complex. Okay. And I don't think it would be fun and I don't think it would be worth it to dig into that reaction. Okay. But I am going to tell you... A quick overview of it. Okay. So that compound doesn't exist. A precursor exists. Okay. And there was a known enzyme that was present in, that is present in onions and garlic both. Okay. Do you know what an enzyme is? It's one of those words that's really familiar. (laughs) Um, From back in the day from AP Biology, senior year of high school. And when were you a senior in high school? Uh, 2010. So good old nine years ago. Yeah. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Wise. I, here's my guess. Okay. It's a, a thing in our case, we're talking about the human body a lot. So mm-hmm. it's a thing that does something <laughs> in the body. <laughs> That's true. It doesn't just do it in the body. Okay. It exists in onions too, which are not bodies. They're just veggies. True, but they are alive. Yeah, but they're not point. bodies. Right. So a good way to describe an enzyme is it helps facilitate a reaction. Mm -hmm. So usually it has a site that fits like a puzzle piece into whatever reaction is trying to facilitate the precursor for that reaction. Mm -hmm. It'll fit into that enzyme. Usually another compound will too. And then a product is formed. Okay. That's a really basic overview of an enzyme. It just helps facilitate a reaction. Okay. So... You've got an enzyme in an onion. It was also in garlic. Mm -hmm. It was known. And then you have this precursor to the thing that hurts our eyes. Uh Uh-huh. So they assume the precursor was coming in to that enzyme, and then we're coming out on the other side with the eye irritant. Okay. So it's like... There's a piece that exists in there already that's kind of ready to go. Is that what I mean by precursor? Like, it's It's just a compound that can be converted into this other thing. Okay. Is a precursor. So it's already in there, Mm -hmm. ready to go. And then Mm -hmm. the enzyme kind of sets 
it off once? Yeah, that's a good way to think of it. Okay. So, and they thought it was just a one-step process for the longest time. However, and I'm not sure exactly what this timeline timeline looks like. Eventually, they realized that if you took that specific precursor that was present in onions mm-hmm. and mixed it with the enzyme, you didn't get the thing out that onions release. Okay. So there's something missing. Huh. What the so heck? So they thought A, that already exists in onions, A plus B, this enzyme, equals C. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know when the timeline is to when they realized this was wrong. Then they learned that A plus B doesn't equal C. Like it doesn't quite equal C? Like there's some right. something that's missing? Mm-hmm. But not like, not like, it's not like saying like 4 plus 4, we always thought 4 plus 4 equaled 28. And then they realize, no, it's not even close. Or is it more like... We thought four plus four equaled nine. It was pretty close because this, and we'll get into this later, but okay. they were right about garlic. So we'll talk about garlic too. But what's crazy to me is as recently as 2002, mm-hmm. they finally discovered the enzyme, the second enzyme in onions that makes the thing that hurts our eyes. 2002. 2002. That's crazy recent. We've been cutting onions for such a long time and had no idea. I know. (laughs) It's amazing. So basically, it's a compound called, the initial compound is called, let me pull up my notes so I get it right. Okay. S1 propanyl L-cysteine sulfoxide. You guys don't care about that. But (laughs) if there's an organic chemist out there, that would at least mean a few things to you. So that compound reacts with the enzyme that they've always known has been around for a long time Mm -hmm. and gives you propanyl sulfinic acid. Mm -hmm. Again, that doesn't mean anything to you guys. It's just a sulfur containing compound. Doesn't matter a ton. And then that reacts with the new 2002 enzyme. It's always been around, but newly discovered to us 2002 enzyme. Uh Uh-huh. To create the thing that irritates our eyes. And the thing that irritates our eyes is sometimes called lacrimatory factor. I think that's a biology type term. Mm -hmm. In the chemistry world, it would be known as propane thiol S oxide, which doesn't mean anything to you guys. So you can call it either one, uh, lacrimatory factor or propane thiol S oxide. I'm just going to continue to call it the eye irritant. Okay, okay. That so, helps. That helps me. I'm like, <laughs> oh no, there's all so, these words. So one compound reacts with an enzyme to uh-huh. make a new compound. Uh-huh. And then another enzyme that nobody knew about comes in and takes it one step further to make our eyeball irritant. So, oh man, that's interesting. So mm-hmm. we always knew there was an enzyme. Yes. But what really threw us was when there was a second enzyme that we didn't know about. And that's what is actually making a plus b equals c that is actually making Mm -hmm. our eyes get irritated when we cut onions yes oh so all of this already is amazing to me it's Mm -hmm. so amazing to me that one Mm -hmm. we thought we knew and didn't Mm -hmm. two the plant has a defense mechanism against being hurt and that's why we (laughs) experience pain yeah and three, it doesn't happen until it's cut in so that it's not just constantly emitting this dangerous thing. Yeah. But it's only emitting this dangerous thing when it's in danger. Yeah. All of that is so cool to me. That's crazy. Gosh. <laughs> so exciting. I thought this was going to be real simple. Yeah. There's something in onions and when you cut it, it hurts your eyes. The end. But there's so many. I hate that I'm about to say this layers to it <laughs> yes there we go yep that is a great so it's pretty amazing yeah that's so crazy and i think <laughs> i think i often think of some of these things as being true and known by the scientific community for like a long time mm-hmm. being not part of it you like mm-hmm. anyone who's like me who's not in it would assume like oh yeah these people have known this stuff forever yeah we just don't we can't understand it but hearing that it was that recent 2002 that they actually mm-hmm. kind of fully discovered what was going on here is very cool. Like it's some of the simplest, but very everyday things of life mm-hmm. are still being discovered all the time. I know it's so cool. That's cool. And just a little bit further, sometimes 
it's hard in biochemical structures Mm -hmm. to really know what the structure is because they're so complex. Mm -hmm. So for simple organic compounds, it's easy to know the structure, but a structure of what uh, what components, what uh, atoms, how they're folded, all of this stuff makes up an enzyme or different biological things can Mm -hmm. be really complicated. And so even after they discovered it, it took them until 2017 to understand the chemical structure Mm -hmm. of the enzyme that creates the thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yes. That was two years ago at the time of this recording. Oh my gosh. So they knew what it did and and the basic mechanics of how it did it, but they didn't understand the full crystal structure is what it's called. The Mm -hmm. full understanding and definition of the way that worked until 2017. Yeah. Gosh. Very cool. But wait, do you want to know why it irritates your eyes? Yes. Okay. I looked into the mechanism and I can see how it would happen, but it's pretty complex. Uh So I can't verify this by my own writing the mechanism. But one of my sources said that the eye irritating compound, when it hits the water Mm -hmm. in your eyes, it reacts with the water in your eyes and maybe some oxygen from the air Mm -hmm. and forms a teeny bit of sulfuric acid. Whoa. And that sulfuric acid is very corrosive and irritating to your eyes. So it's your eyes are trying to get it out as fast as possible. So it has what it needs available like in itself Mm -hmm. and in the air Mm -hmm. and stuff to just form that acid. A little bit of sulfuric acid. Yeah. Oh man. That definitely sounds like it would irritate the eyes it does <laughs> yeah so sulfuric acid is corrosive so anytime it comes into the delicate membranes in your eyes it the delicate membranes anywhere in your body but now we're talking about your eyes specifically it will cause the burning sensation that you <laughs> that sometimes accompanies the eye watering with onions yeah that is sulfuric acid burning your eyes wow but just a tiny see amount Interesting. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, seriously. What the heck? And because of that, I know a few ways that you can stop the onion eye water thing. Oh, uh, there we go. That's what we need. But first, I want you to tell me back everything you just learned, and then we'll talk about it more. Okay. Onions on their own don't cause this, like, just a whole onion that you are holding mm-hmm. or whatever um, that you just got from the store, which makes sense. Mm-hmm. We all know that. Yep. But it's like... Definitely nice that that's not the case because otherwise they'd be like, I think people probably just wouldn't cook with very often <laughs> just having them around. Or you'd have like onion bags or something like that. And they're like, all right, this thing's sealed away. <laughs> so um, it doesn't happen on its own, but once you cut it or once it's damaged mm-hmm. or something like that in mm-hmm. in nature or something like that, it's kind of a defense mechanism. And it uh, then a compound is like created or released or whatever, but we yes. it's not already just like the burning stuff mm-hmm. just in the onion already. Mm-hmm. Um, and until recently, they didn't have all the pieces together mm-hmm. to figure out how it happens. But it yes. sounds like, if I heard it correctly, there's like some compounds present and then they found out that there's not just one, but recently found out that there are two enzymes right. that essentially make this make it happen. I'm, I'm not totally... Mm-hmm. That part, but basically, like they make the new thing form mm-hmm. when it's cut, yes, and that's released into the air, yes. And what's crazy too is that because of the makeup of the stuff that's released into the air, mm-hmm. it has what it needs available combined with what elements it's already made up of mm-hmm. to form a little tiny amount. Yes. Of sulfuric acid. Yes. Which is just enough. I'm sure it wouldn't take much, honestly, because our, yeah. eyes, are, our <laughs> eyes are really sensitive. Yes. To then cause a reaction. And we are, are always standing right above it anyway. If we're sitting yeah. right on top of the mm-hmm. the onion. So it's like, it doesn't have to travel far. But is that right? Did That's I get right. It? Yes. I'll say, I think that there's something when we cut or the onion is damaged that it breaks the cell walls mm-hmm. and that's more biology, but something in the damaging of the cell walls allows the enzyme to react with the precursors to make the the airborne compound, the gaseous one that hits our eyes. 
So that's one thing I wanted to clarify. Okay. And two, I think you did a good job of explaining it, but just to hit it one more time, there's a precursor that exists and mm-hmm. it goes through one enzyme and then an, make something new and the new thing goes through a second enzyme. Okay. Okay. And what's created at the end is an airborne organic compound Mm -hmm. that, yeah, like you said, when it hits your eyes, turns into sulfuric acid. So the substance, enzyme, like a precursor kind of compound Mm -hmm. deal, enzyme, Mm -hmm. and then the product of that Mm -hmm. then hits another enzyme, Mm -hmm. and then we get the thing that gets released into the air. Yes. And that's how A plus B equals C, to quote your earlier conundrum that the scientists were experiencing. Yep. That's exactly right. Wow. So Gosh. it's all a chemical reaction. And so now how do we protect ourselves against this vicious vegetable? Well, <laughs> you could wear goggles if you wanted. My a friend of my mom's, um, who's kind of quirky, one time gave her onion goggles and we thought it was the funniest thing. We thought it was just <laughs> like, what? Why would you wear these? But she probably should use them. <laughs> I probably should steal them, actually, if she's not going to use them. Onion goggles, I think would maybe be the most effective for protecting your eyes without changing the flavor in the onion. Mm -hmm. But the other option you have, there's two more. One, you could keep your onion cold before Mm -hmm. you do it Mm -hmm. because reactions require energy Mm -hmm. and something that's cold has lost some of that energy. Mm -hmm. So there's less heat, there's less energy to put into the reaction. Oh, that that is interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the vegetables that a lot of people don't refrigerate. They're going to use them kind right. of soon. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'll just keep it in a, in a bowl or whatever. Yeah. Pretty much any reaction, if you put it in cold, it will slow it down because uh-huh. it's missing energy. Uh-huh. So that's one option. The other is to run water over the onion uh-huh. while you're cutting it, which I think would be complicated. Yeah, that would. <laughs> but that would basically re- react with that plus the air would basically react with the onion fast enough to stop the reaction from ever getting to your eyes. The sulfuric acid would be formed and washed away before it ever got to your eyes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be hard because onions are some of the like more treacherous things to have to cut. You got to keep your hand on it so that it's like Uh if you're dicing them, that is, it's like they're going to start flying apart pretty quickly. So those are the two main ways. The third way Mm -hmm. is crazy and not available to the public yet. But I believe the same group that discovered in 2002 discovered the enzyme Mm -hmm. is working to genetically modify onions so that they don't have that enzyme anymore. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Um, It's not commercially available yet, and it might change the flavor of the onion. Yeah, I was going to say that. What if it has like these unintended effects and not even like some of the Mm -hmm. other things we've talked about that have been pretty negative? But if Mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, this is less enjoyable. Like some people swear that, you know, a diet drink doesn't taste the same, whatever. And um, which I would actually agree with on on almost all of them. Mm -hmm. But it might be like, okay, well, yep, it's nice not have the burning, but I'm still going to (laughs) use regular regular onions. onions. But that is just very cool. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. I absolutely loved learning about this. I had so much fun. There's so many scientific papers Mm -hmm. in the American Chemical Society journals and stuff that a lot of times I'm just getting websites that I'm not 100% sure Mm -hmm. that I don't even know if this is right, you know? And so it was fun and I have to do a lot of digging to find, make sure that it's right. Yeah. It was fun to find papers in my own journals that I'm used to and being so excited about it. So that was really cool. Dang, that's awesome. So that's it. That's how it works. Wow. Fun, huh? Yeah. I wish I'd known some of those like other tactics a long time ago. There's been many times where I feel <laughs> like, oh my gosh, my eyes are still burning like a long time later. And it feels like, I mean, I would have loved to have tried, you know, putting in the, I'm definitely going to now, putting them in the fridge mm-hmm. or maybe trying the water thing if I can figure out a way to do it that won't like cut you, make a huge mess or whatever. Yeah. Well, and I think I'm not positive, but I think the keeping it in the fridge could be it would change some other chemical reactions if those are happening and it could change the flavor a little, Mm -hmm. but I don't think it'd be significant. Yeah. So have you heard some of the the theories people have about that? They're like non-scientific theories about how to not be burned. No. Well, one of them is this. It's the only one I remember very clearly. I've heard recently from somebody who believes it is to take the very middle part of the onion out completely and throw it away at the very beginning. And they swear that it makes the 
burning less bad. I'm not sure I believe that that would do anything. Yeah. Unless there's a higher concentration in the middle of that thing. Right. Which is possible. Yeah. But I didn't read anything about that. Yeah. That's one of the things I've heard people say where it's like they obviously don't have any data about it. They're just like, oh, yeah, get rid of the core. Okay. I think I've heard something about holding a spoon in your mouth, but I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I guess it could. Maybe this stainless steel could react with something, but I'd have to look into that one, too. And if you wear an astronaut's helmet or like a scuba gear. That would work. Yeah. That absolutely would. The scuba gear for sure. Yeah. Scuba, those goggles, that would absolutely protect your eyeballs. Yeah, that's another really common, you know, <laughs> household solution to it. So, Well, that's it. So do you want to move into our next section? I have a little surprise that I haven't told you about. Whoa, yes. You know how we normally talk about what made us happy this week? Uh-huh. Since it's Thanksgiving month, instead I want to talk about what we're thankful for this week. Oh, nice. Okay, great. So um, what are you thankful for this week, Jam? My family always did this at Thanksgiving. We would just write down what we're thankful for in a basket and they would read it out loud and oh, call cool. it our thankful, thankfuls. So uh-huh. I'll just call these. These are our thankfuls that are in at the end of our show for this month. Dang, I like that. It's good to be thankful. I'm thankful for something a little bit unusual this week. Um, my foot has been um, under the weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had a, a sore on my foot, which I'm not going to go into details if any of you guys are squeamish. But basically, it's just a bad place to get a sore because... Not only does it affect everything you do because you walk around, but that also can in turn have a like a, a preventative, mm-hmm. preventing it from being able to heal right. effect because I've been like trying to move on with my life, which has probably made it worse. And so I've been on it a lot and it's, it got worse for a while and I've had this thing for like three weeks. And Man. yeah, as of like three days ago or so, it started showing signs of getting better. <gasps> That's so exciting. We've got some antibiotics being pumped into my body now and um some killer like prescription uh, antibiotic cream stuff Nice, and it is doing the job so i'm thankful because um it's a lot less trouble it's getting better it's not hurting as much all these stinks when every single step you take is painful yeah yep yeah and i've only been able to wear certain shoes because Mm -hmm. other ones are not like don't have enough give or whatever yeah anyway so i'm very very thankful it's one of the things like you talked about when you were sick how you're like oh, oh remember gosh, yes remember what it's like to be well i'm like <laughs> man remember when i just walked around every day and didn't even think about it like geez I remember when i could walk and it was fine <laughs> that's so, so funny that's exactly how i feel so i'm very very thankful what about you nice i am thankful i actually was in a friend's wedding this past weekend mm-hmm. and it's It was one of my former roommates. We lived together for four years or three years. Mm -hmm. And she just, I'm so happy for them. They are such a great couple. They worked really hard. They invested a lot leading up to their marriage. They worked on themselves separately. They were together for the whole time we lived together. Mm -hmm. And so just to finally see after that long period of investing in making sure that they were going to have a good marriage that they got to be married was so fun and the wedding was just really fun we um i was part of the wedding party and the ceremony was far away from the reception so they rented a bus and it was not like a regular bus it was i guess a party bus which you know sounds crazy but (laughs) and so we could all move around and talk and yeah it's the only time i've ever been in a wedding where there was a whole 30 or 45 minutes where I just got to be with the bride and the groom and all of the rest of the wedding party and just have fun. Yeah. Cause it's like, you're pretty separate a lot of times for a lot mm-hmm. of weddings. Like yeah. at least the like bridesmaids and stuff mm-hmm. totally separate from the groom and groomsmen and all that stuff. Yeah. And you don't, you're supposed to be doing something most yeah. of the time. Like, right. Right, right. It's this and then it's this and then it's this. And maybe you get to relax at the reception, but they don't get to relax. Yeah. They're the couple is out and about and meeting and greeting. And so, uh-huh. It was this very, it was almost like a really tiny special reception just for us. Yeah. And we couldn't do anything else. You know, we didn't have any other tasks. So yeah. it was just a fun celebration. And that was, I think, a memory that's going to last me a really long time. It was really fun. Dang. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations, Kaylee and Thomas. Nice. I'm so excited for your, for your marriage. Dang, that's awesome. It's very fun. So that's what I'm thankful for this week. Okay, let's get into some references. The references I used for this episode is an article in the ACS called 
Enzyme that makes you cry. Crystal structure of lacrimatory factor synthase from Allium sepa. And the lead author on that was Josie Silvaroli. Hopefully I said that right. Um, and then I used a Hillsborough College in the UK website. It looks like a pretty outdated website, but the information was accurate. I double checked with those other ones. And that is chm.brisdot.ac.uk slash. Oh, wow. It's a really long one. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes, but it's uh, from Paul M. Burnham at Hillsborough College. And his was just an overview of the steps of forming the final eye irritant. Mm -hmm. Why do onions make you cry in science news? And the source on that was Texas A&M University. They were working with scientists at Texas A&M University to come up with an accurate article. And thiopropanol S oxide, a lacrimatory factor in onions. That's a 1971 article when they first started to discover the eye irritant, which Mm -hmm. was pretty fun and cool. Yeah. And finally, the Nature article, an onion enzyme that makes the eyes water. This was, the primary author is S, I'm going to butcher this, M-I, I-M-A-I. And that article in Nature was when they initially discovered the final enzyme. That was in 2002. So those are all my references. Thank you so much to all those sources for your cool work on onions and sharing it with the world. Yeah. That's been really fun. And we'd also like to thank some new countries, new people listening around the world in Nepal, Panama, Cambodia, and a territory of the U.S., Puerto Rico. So that's been fun to watch it expand even more this week. Yeah. And thanks to all of you guys who are listening. We're so thankful that you want to learn about chemistry and that you tune in every week to learn something new. Melissa and I have a lot of ideas for topics of chemistry in everyday life, but we want to hear from you. So if you have any questions or ideas, you can reach out to us on Gmail, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at chem for your life. That's chem F O R your life to share your thoughts and ideas. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And if you really like it, you can write a review on Apple podcasts that helps us to share chemistry with even more people. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Kleene and Jam Robinson. Jam Robinson is our producer, and we'd like to give a special thanks to A. Kalini and V. Garza, who reviewed this episode. A. Kalini, who reviewed this episode. Thanks to A. Kalini, who reviewed this episode.